For centuries, the image of Cleopatra VII has been wrapped in legend, the last pharaoh of Egypt, a woman of unmatched beauty, cunning intellect, and political genius. But behind the myths and marble busts lies a question that has haunted historians for generations. Who was Cleopatra? Really? Was she purely Egyptian, descendant of the sacred blood of the pharaohs? Or did her lineage tell a different story, one that history, politics, and pride have tried to erase? Now, thanks to a groundbreaking DNA analysis performed on remains believed to be hers and on skeletal fragments linked to her family, scientists have uncovered genetic evidence that contradicts everything we thought we knew about the last queen of the Nile. And what they found doesn't just challenge Cleopatra's identity, it redefines the very idea of what it meant to be Egyptian. Cleopatra's story has been told and retold through the lens of conquest and seduction. The Romans painted her as a manipulative temptress, Later, chroniclers transformed her into a tragic heroine, but none of them knew her, not truly. For centuries, her ancestry was a mystery carefully preserved behind the grandeur of her dynasty, the Ptolemies, Greek rulers who inherited Egypt after the death of Alexander the Great. Historians long assumed that the Ptolemaic line stayed pure, maintaining Greek blood through strict intermarriage among siblings, a practice meant to preserve their divine right to rule. Cleopatra, by this logic, would have been of Greek Macedonian descent, with perhaps a trace of Egyptian influence from her mother's side. But recent excavations near Taposiris Magna, a temple complex west of Alexandria, have yielded skeletal remains, a woman of royal rank, buried with emblems and inscriptions consistent with Cleopatra's lineage. When DNA samples were extracted from the bones, scientists expected to confirm what textbooks had always claimed. Instead, they uncovered the first thread of a revelation that would shake Egyptology to its core. When the samples were analyzed, researchers found something completely unexpected. Genetic markers not associated with Greece or Macedonia, but with regions much farther south, Nubia and the Horn of Africa. The mitochondrial DNA inherited from the mother carried haplogroups common among populations in ancient Sudan and Ethiopia. In other words, Cleopatra's maternal line may have been of African origin, blending sub-Saharan ancestry with the Hellenistic blood of the Ptolemies. This discovery has forced historians to reconsider everything, from her complexion to her cultural identity. For centuries, art and literature depicted Cleopatra as pale-skinned and European, a reflection of Western bias rather than scientific fact. But the DNA evidence suggests a different truth, one that aligns with Egypt's geographical and historical reality a civilization that stood at the crossroads of Africa and the Mediterranean, absorbing influences from both worlds. If these results hold, Cleopatra wasn't the last Greek ruler of Egypt. She was the first symbol of its genetic and cultural fusion, a living embodiment of two continents converging under one crown. But such a revelation doesn't come without controversy. As the DNA findings began to circulate among scholars, political resistance quickly followed. The Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities called for additional verification, questioning the authenticity of the remains and the methods used. Some academics warned that rewriting Cleopatra's ethnicity could provoke public and political backlash. And yet, within the research community, more samples were quietly being tested from other tombs linked to the Ptolemaic dynasty, including remains thought to belong to Cleopatra's sister, Arsinoe IV, discovered in Ephesus decades earlier. To the astonishment of geneticists, Arsino's DNA showed similar African maternal markers, further strengthening the case that Cleopatra's family was not exclusively Greek. What's more, the isotopic analysis of their teeth, a chemical record of diet and geography, revealed something incredible. Both women had grown up in North Africa, not Greece. It seemed the sands of Egypt were finally ready to whisper a truth that history had buried, but not everyone wanted to listen. As the evidence grew stronger, so did the tension between history and identity. The revelation that Cleopatra's lineage might trace back to Africa rather than Europe sparked outrage among certain academic circles. To some, it was a scientific correction. To others, a political threat. Records from the time of Octavian, the future Emperor Augustus, hinted that Rome deliberately erased Cleopatra's image, portraying her as a foreign temptress who corrupted Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. But what if this wasn't just propaganda? 
What if Rome's obsession with destroying her legacy stemmed from something deeper, a fear that Egypt's last monarch wasn't the exotic Greek queen they wanted her to be, but a ruler who symbolized an unbroken African heritage? If Cleopatra truly embodied the unity of African and Mediterranean bloodlines, then her death marked more than the end of Egypt's pharaonic age. It marked the erasure of a genetic truth that threatened the Roman worldview, a truth buried for over 2,000 years, until science unearthed it once again. As more results poured in, the scientific community found itself torn between astonishment and disbelief. The DNA from the Taposiris magna remains not only aligned with African maternal markers, it also contained traces of Mediterranean and Near Eastern ancestry, particularly from ancient Levantine populations. This meant Cleopatra's bloodline was far more complex than anyone had imagined, a genetic mosaic that stretched from the Nile Valley to the Eastern Mediterranean. This revelation painted a radically different picture of the Ptolemaic dynasty. Far from being a closed circle of inbred Greek elites, the family may have strategically married into local and foreign noble lines, blending their blood to maintain alliances and legitimacy among Egypt's native priests and African provinces. Cleopatra, therefore, wasn't an anomaly. She was the culmination of centuries of cross-cultural fusion, the living embodiment of Egypt's role as the world's ancient melting pot. But beneath the excitement of discovery, a question began to rise one that no scientist could ignore. If Cleopatra's lineage was so genetically diverse, why did so many historical sources work so hard to conceal it? To answer that, historians revisited the aftermath of Cleopatra's fall. When Octavian conquered Egypt in 30 BCE, he didn't just destroy a dynasty, he rewrote an entire history. The temples that once praised her were defaced, inscriptions chiseled away, and her statues were systematically destroyed or reinterpreted to fit Roman propaganda. The DNA revelations now offer a chilling context to that erasure. For Rome, Cleopatra's African ancestry would have undermined their narrative of superiority, their portrayal of her as an exotic foreigner who lured powerful men to their doom. If the last pharaoh of Egypt had African roots, then Rome's conquest of her kingdom wasn't just a victory over the East, it was the silencing of an entire heritage that didn't fit the imperial story. Some scholars even suggest that Octavian's campaign against Cleopatra was as much ideological as it was political, an effort to erase a queen who represented the fusion of worlds that Rome sought to dominate. The DNA findings, thousands of years later, now expose the fingerprints of that erasure written into the double helix of time. Beyond the politics, the DNA analysis has opened a window into the life of Cleopatra herself, a woman whose identity was as layered as the civilization she ruled. The genetic evidence reveals that she was a product of multiple worlds, perhaps fluent not only in Greek and Egyptian, but also familiar with African dialects spoken along the Southern Nile. Her reign, once dismissed by some historians as a desperate struggle for survival, now appears as a deliberate attempt to unite cultures, the African, the Greek, and the Eastern, into one cohesive empire. Her alliances with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony weren't mere romantic entanglements. They were acts of geopolitical genius, meant to secure Egypt's sovereignty at a time when the Mediterranean was ruled by men who feared powerful women. And perhaps that's the greatest irony of all. For centuries, Cleopatra has been defined by how others saw her, a seductress, a witch, a tragic lover. Yet her DNA tells a different story, not of vanity, but of legacy, a queen whose very blood carried the convergence of continents. In the final phase of the research, scientists cross-referenced Cleopatra's DNA markers with modern populations. The results were jaw-dropping. Her closest genetic matches were found not in Greece or Macedonia, but among peoples of Northern Sudan, Ethiopia, and the eastern Mediterranean coast. The data painted a biological bridge between Africa and the Middle East, suggesting that Cleopatra's ancestors may have been part of ancient migrations that shaped the entire region. This discovery doesn't just challenge the myths about one queen, it challenges the very foundation of how history categorizes identity. It blurs the boundaries between African, Greek, and Middle Eastern, reminding us that ancient civilizations were never isolated. They were woven together through movement, marriage, and shared destiny. If proven beyond doubt, 
This revelation could force historians to rewrite thousands of years of cultural history, acknowledging that Egypt's last pharaoh was not a foreign outsider ruling over an African land, but a daughter of both. A queen whose blood carried the memory of multiple worlds, and whose DNA even now whispers the truth that empires tried to bury. Reflecting on these findings, one truth becomes undeniable. History is never as simple as the stories we inherit. Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt, wasn't just a ruler caught between empires. She was the living embodiment of a crossroads where Africa, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East converged. Her DNA doesn't divide these worlds. It unites them. For centuries, empires tried to define her. Rome demonized her, Europe idealized her, and Hollywood romanticized her. But science has done what politics and myth never could. It gave her voice back. A voice that speaks not through scrolls or statues, but through the timeless language of genetics. A story written in the very molecules that once flowed through her veins. These revelations force us to confront our own biases about ancestry, identity, and civilization itself. If the blood of Egypt's last queen was a fusion of continents, then perhaps the true power of Cleopatra was not her throne, her armies, or her alliances. It was the fact that she represented humanity's shared origin, a reminder that borders and categories are inventions of time, not of nature. Her DNA has survived conquests, centuries, and silence. And now as we decode it, we find ourselves face to face with the uncomfortable but beautiful truth that our histories are intertwined and our differences are illusions carved by power. Cleopatra's story is no longer just the tragedy of a queen defeated by Rome. It is the story of a woman who defied the limits of bloodlines, whose very existence challenged the walls that empires built. And as science continues to unearth the voices buried beneath millennia of dust, one thing is certain. The past is not dead, it's alive within us. If you want to uncover more truths hidden in ancient DNA, stories that rewrite everything we thought we knew about history, make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications, because the next discovery might just change what you believe about where we all come from.